Hey everyone, how are you doing? Today I want to share with you, I think, one of the coolest aspects about what we do in Capoeira. And when I learned this, it totally changed the way I look at things, especially on my personal training and in the way I teach. Because this took me from being like a babysitter or, I don't know what, an entertainer or to like something totally different. Yeah. So this is where we explain a little bit the scientific connection of uh, the capoeira training and what happens in our minds as we're training or what happens in the minds of our students depending how you're listening to this video so um as physical workers we have to study anatomy and biology and physics and mathematics and neuroscience and all that stuff, if we want to get a complete picture uh, about what's happening in the training process. Of course, we don't need to know all this stuff in the first day. Nobody knows it. It's stuff that you figure out along the way. And hopefully from generation to generation, the information becomes easier to access. So the jumps forward are faster. Okay. You can totally start teaching by being like an Uber teacher. Yeah. Where you follow a system. And as you follow the system, you start to understand how the motor works, right? You don't need to be a mechanic from the first day. So our body is, a, and this is going to be a very simplified down-to-earth explanation. So if there's doctors in the crowd or neuroscientists, understand that we are in the context here of using capoeira as a tool for personal empowerment and understanding what's happening inside of us. So I'm going to keep it very, very simple without big words. Uh, medicine and science are a lot about understanding our body. So the body is divided into systems, even though when we are alive, everything is functioning as one whole system. But when we die and they learn, study our body, it's very easy to divide also the body into departments. Yeah, let's just not forget that when we are alive, all the departments work in perfect harmony so of course we have the skeletal system which is the bones and joints which enable us to even have structures yeah so to resist gravity on that we have the muscular system which basically helps us move the skeleton yeah so the muscular system is just rubber bands all muscles are are just simple rubber bands that can either flex or you know or extend that's all the muscles can do but the muscles are fired, are connected to the big electronical system, which that is the system we want to talk about today. And of course, there is other systems. We have the cardiovascular system, the lungs, the heart, which basically is the filter that sends the nutrients to all parts of the body and takes out all the waste. So this is like the filter in your pool, in your aquarium. That's the cardiovascular, right? But one of the main things, the one that coordinates everything, is the most interesting and least known about system is the neurological system. So why don't we know so much about this system? And any honest doctor will tell you that most of what we knew for most of humanity in the last 20 years, just because there's new technology. So a lot of things are totally different now in our understanding. So the reason why the understanding was limited about this system for many years is because most of medicine is cardavel medicine. Most of medicine is done on dead bodies. And once we're dead, the whole electronic system is not functioning. So there is very, very little ways. There were very little ways to discover about this. But anyways, we still learned a lot with a lot of, you know, with a lot of experiments and uh, accidents. But today there is technology that is enabling us to understand it at a whole different level. And it creates the connection, the bridge between physical movement and the development of this whole computer. So it's very easy to use metaphors like computers and stuff like that. But all of these metaphors are just a little bit accurate. We just use them in order to get a concept of what's happening. But they are all very limited. Okay. Because... For example, our brain, yes, it has some functions similar to a computer, but it's a million times more advanced than any computer that really exists. Yeah. 
But yes, there are certain functions that it does. For example, there is functions that are happening behind the screen all the time that I don't need to control, right? My heart is beating, yeah? Everything is going and I don't need to control it. This is the, you know, the autonomous system. So the computer also, there's constantly things happening in the background, yeah? So in certain things, it's okay to use this metaphor. Our neurological system, of course, the brain, the, 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 the spinal cord, and all the neurons that go into all the body, okay? Another metaphor to look at it is like a big system of roads. And like roads, just like in any city, you have like main roads, the highways, and you have uh, smaller roads and smaller roads until it becomes little uh, bike trails, right? So if you take a city, you have everything from a little bike trail to a big, big highway. In many ways, our neurological system is always like that. And the cars that are moving on this highway back and forth are giving commands and bringing information. Giving commands and bringing information. Bringing information from our senses, from our eyes, our nose, our mouth, our skin, and giving commands what to do. But this metaphor, you see, again, it's not so accurate because if you're living in a small town, you maybe in your head now you're thinking, okay, there's three roads, there are four roads. It's impossible almost to understand the amount of paths and roads that we have in our mind. And they're constantly changing and constantly opening new intersections and new connections. It's very, very hard to understand this. So if you take all the highways in Moscow and in Mumbai and in New York and in France and in uh, Shanghai, and take all the roads from all the biggest cities in the world and put them together, you're still not even close to what's happening in your brain. So what? how do we create a highway or how do we take a, a bike lane and slowly turn it into a highway as we train, okay? So this system is set up to do many things. First of all, of course, survival. But then there's also aspect of it where you want to thrive and reach a higher potential. This can only happen when you are not in the flight or flight mechanism, okay? If you're under stress, if you think that you're going to die, if you don't have food, then you're still in the part of your system that is about survival, okay? But there is an option to get out of that system and now to start to build roads that help you have a better experience of life. So. Every time you create a new skill, let's say bouncing a ball or playing an instrument, in the beginning, there is no road for this skill. It's just jungle, yeah? Metaphorical jungle. That's why it's so hard in the beginning. But if you do it constantly, let's say for five minutes every day, then after one week, if you do five minutes every day for seven days, Basically, you walk the same path in the jungle. When you walk the same path back and forth in the jungle, suddenly the bushes, they don't grow anymore where you were stepping. There is a small trail. And then it becomes a little bit easier. As it becomes a little bit easier, you get motivated. You start to enjoy. It's not so scary anymore. Now you're going to do 10 minutes for 10 days. And suddenly this path that didn't exist, it suddenly becomes a bike path. And then as you deepen your practice with certain tricks that we know along the way that science now is giving us the science to understand it, but any movement practice in the history of humanity uh, knew it in a different way, okay? Then the more you practice something with concentration, with positive emotion, with fun, with enjoyment, the faster this bicycle path will become a highway. The highways you have in your brain are all those things that you can do automatically without almost thinking about them. You know how sometimes you get in the car and suddenly you're in the office? You don't even know how you got to your office. You know how many automatic movements you did? Think about when you're driving. So that is a big highway. Brushing your teeth. You almost do it unconsciously. Try to brush your teeth tomorrow with the other hand and see how it feels. It's going to feel like a like a bicycle train, a trail in the jungle. You won't even be able. Yeah, you're going to see that the toothbrush is going to fly out of your hand. So if you want to do this experiment, just to feel how the highway is and how the bike trail is, it's very easy. Try to brush your teeth with your weak hand for one week and see what happens.
So basically, there is endless amounts of paths, and the more times we go down this path, the, the bigger the highway gets. The bigger the highway gets, the easier and more automatic the movement is, okay? Now, of course, it also works in the opposite direction. So now let's say I started a, tra I started a path for a throwing a basketball. And every day I would go to the backyard and throw and throw, and this path was getting better. But now I slipped off my skateboard and broke my hand. And for two months, I didn't go back to this path. Obviously, just like in the jungle, after three days, everything starts to grow back. And the path is a little bit more hidden. And now I need to restart. This is where the consistency aspect of daily practice is so important. Because once you create the paths, you have to really be consistent with it, with a lot of positive emotion, until it becomes a highway. Once it becomes a highway, even if you don't travel down that road a few days or a few weeks or even a few years, the highway is still there because you created so much importance for your well-being in your brain with this then now it's automatic, okay? So now I wanna show you zooming in how these highways, how they really look, yeah? So this is how they look, these are the neurons, yeah? This is one cell, this whole thing is one neuron, and this is the connection to the next one. So what you're seeing here is one piece of the road connecting to the next piece of a road. Yeah, think about it like maybe, a, it's not even a street, yeah? Maybe it's like a block, yeah, I don't know. Tuck, tuck. And these things, they connect from the brain. For example, there is a road of these that's responsible for picking up the light that is reflecting on my retinas and bringing it into the brain to make a, some kind of sense out of it. Because we don't see things, we see light. We see reflections of light on objects and our brain is the one that gives it a, some kind of meaning. Okay, so these reflections of light they come on this path, and then there is a different path that is the decision to move the hand and to do something, for example. Okay, so I'm not going to go into what's happening here inside right now. We'll do it sometime in the future, but I want to show you the coolest thing about capoeira and about movement. So, this synapse here, I hope you can see the synapse. Let's see if I can zoom in. Yes, perfect. This connection between one neuron to the other one is a very important connection because the electricity comes from the command, passes through this road, and here it has to give some kind of si signal for the next one to fire. But the connection between both of them, you see that little space here, there is no electrical connection here. So what happens? The electricity runs inside the cell. It triggers the transmitter. And here there is a chemical reaction very quickly that triggers the electricity in the next one. Okay? Science and medicine till this day have only reached a stage where they can affect our neurology in the connection, in the synapses, in the connection between the synapses. Basically, every medicine you take, any drug you take, any food you take, okay, the chemistry inside of it affects the connection of the synapses, okay? So the, the retinin or the HDAD medicine that we give children, it affects it inhibits or promotes certain receptors. There's many kinds of these receptors, different kind of chemistry going on. And by blocking certain one of them or streaming more chemicals in certain one of them, we can change our behavior, okay? But we are living now at the time, very exciting time, where science is starting to learn how to not only affect the, the connection between the cells, but have effect inside the neurological cell, okay? This is the medicine of the future. Instead of blocking the message between two cells, how can we manipulate the cells? And one of the first things that was discovered that this myelin, you see this myelin, these are these, the myelin is basically the rubber wire, the rubber, the rubber protection of the wire, okay? So the thicker 
the protection is, and the more the electricity can pass safely and fast, the more quicker we can react or see stuff, okay? So what science has discovered is that by very, very diverse physical movement at a young age, the myelin sieve basically becomes thicker and more, how do you say, uh, when the electricity passes, more conductive, when you conduct electricity faster. So when we are teaching capoeira, guys, we are building the highways in our own brains, but more excitedly, we are building the highways in our children's brains. And that is why you can use movement to take people off medicine, not overnight, but with intense, correct movement, which is all included in the courses that you're doing. And all the kids games that you see are built in a certain kind of incoherence with the science that we learned from our professor, Dr. Mark Vertheim, which sat for eight years at the University of Cologne in Germany, which is one of the top sports universities in the world. And he sat together with his colleagues, which some of them are the top trainers in the Bundesliga and in Barcelona and all these top leagues, because where there is money right now in maximizing potential is in football. Because when you take a child like Messi and you train him in a certain way that he sees faster than people and he reacts faster than people and he see and he moves faster than people, even though he's so small, it doesn't look like he should be doing it. Now you understand what we are doing in Capoeira, okay? So that is very exciting, and I hope it motivates you to keep studying. Have a great week.